today what we are going to do is just talk a little bit more about how to use a calculator in finding derivatives. Now, you have to be where? Whoa, my pen's not working again. Okay. You have to be where? Because sometimes the calculator will say that there is a derivative, but the derivative does not exist. So you have to make sure that you understand where a derivative does not exist. Now, we've talked about two definitions for derivatives. There is actually a third definition. Now, you do not have to have this definition memorized. The other two you do. But this is the definition that a calculator uses. Well, specifically, the TI-84 uses this in calculating its derivative. Because a calculator cannot really approach do a limit. So what it does is it picks a number just a little bit above the number that you want the slope for. And then it picks a number just a little bit below that point you want. And it subtracts the two. So it finds the change in x over then the change in y. And so this is called the difference quotient, the metric difference quotient. So you can imagine, so if I have a function here, and this is the point um, A, we'll say, where I want to find the slope of a tangent line. So if I pick a point just right above A, and then pick a point right below A, and find the secant of this line, and I approach A, so that it approach so that h just gets smaller and smaller. You see, I'm going to very closely estimate that slope of the tangent line. Now, the calculator, as I said earlier, it cannot approach zero. So what the calculator does is it substitutes a very small number for the value of h. Now the TI-84 is programmed to use the value 0 0.001. So they go just one thousandth above the value and one thousandth below the value and find the slope of that secant line. And so then what happens is sometimes the derivative that you're given from your calculator is a close estimate. So let's look at this example. So this should be example two in your notes. We did example one in class today. And we're going to use the difference, the symmetric difference quotient here to find the derivative of x cubed when x equals two. Okay? So actually, why don't you try this in your calculator? Because you should be able to do this now. So in your calculator, would you go n derivative x cubed when x is 2? So pause this video if you need to. Take a moment. What answer do you get? Now, if you're using the TI-84, you're probably getting a derivative of 12.000, a bunch of zeros, 1, let's say. This is probably the TI-84. Now, if you're using the TI-inspire, you're probably getting 12. So which is the correct limit? Well, if I use the definitions as h approaches 0, this is the correct limit. But why does the calculator give you 12.001? Remember, it cannot do limits. So it uses these values for h. So for this function, if a is equal to 2, I'm approaching the value of 2, I'm going to end up with 2.001, and the function is x cubed, take away 1.998 cubed, and that's all divided by 0 0.002. When I do that in the calculator, it doesn't come out to the exact derivative. It comes out to an estimation of the derivative, which is that value. So you need to be able to know how to read it. Now, how do you know for sure? Remember I told you, you had to know whether a derivative exists at x equals 0. Well, this is my cubic function. And we know that a cubic function looks like this. And when x is equal to 2, we can see here that there is no corner, cusp, or vertical tangent, that it's also continuous there. Therefore, it is differentiable. OK. Now, we have to be smarter than the calculator sometimes. So why don't, you, why don't we look at the absolute value of x, and we're looking at the derivative as, um, at the value when a is 0, OK? So now, if we were to use the symmetric difference formula, let's check it out. Remember, the symmetric difference is a plus 0 0.001 minus the function a minus 0 0.0. Remember, I'm just picking a point a little bit above and a little bit of below my point of interest, 0.002. So now it's absolute value when a 
it has a value of zero. So I'm going to have the absolute value of 0 0.001, subtracting the absolute value of, what would that be, negative 0 0.001, and it's all divided by 0 0.002. Okay, so the absolute value is 0 0.001, and I'm going to be subtracting 0 0.001 all over 0 0.002. So using this definition, then I would get zero as the absolute, as the der derivative of the absolute value of x at the point zero. Okay. Now, if you put zero as the answer to your problem, you would actually get it wrong. But why, Ms. Clybert? The calculator. Well, at least the TI-84 calculator. It tells me that this is the derivative of the absolute value of x at zero. What does the TI Inspire tell you? Well, those of you that have a TI Inspire, when you put in the derivative, you get plus or minus 1. Huh. So what's going on? Well, let's look at it graphically. The absolute value of x, we know, looks like this. And then what is going on when x is 0? Well, we can see there we have a cusp. The slope as I approach from the right, we have a positive 1. This slope is a negative 1. Since the slopes are not the same as I approach the point of interest, then it is not differentiable. So the correct response here is the, the um, derivative does not exist at x equals 0. So remember, you have to know when derivatives don't exist. Do not just take the calculator's answer. Okay? Now, last of all, I just want to make sure you can graph using the derivative function in your calculator. So those of you that have an 84 calculator, would you please go to your y equals screen? And you're going to have to type n deriv. Remember, that's just math. 8. Okay. And then you have to type the function, which is the natural log of x. That's the function. And this tells me it's in respect to. And we want to graph the function here. So put that into your calculator. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this using the Inspire, and we'll check and see what we get. So those of you using an Inspire, we are going to put the derivative. I got a great shortcut for you. Check this out. If you go Shift minus, oh, wait, why is my calculator? Oh, it's on ink mode. Oh, I'll take it off ink mode. Um, turn off ink. There we go. So now if I go Shift minus, notice I get derivative. Way cool, huh? X. And then I type in here natural log. So it is control natural log for x. And then I press enter. There is the derivative graph. Okay. Now what graph does that look like? Could you make a conjecture? So what is the derivative of natural log? So now you should be able to graph a derivative on your calculator. And you should be able to calculate the derivative. Okay. So now do those homework problems.